Well, good morning and welcome back to The Art of Fire. I'm Bruce. We're doing the filming and uh, excessive talking today. And we've got another wonderful set of glass pieces to make for you today. We're going to do a quick overview. And if you should notice any pixelation, it's not because we're throwing pixie dust. It's because our signal gets a little bit weak back in the corner. So I'll try and do this real quick for you. So today we're going to have some custom pieces. We're going to talk about custom pieces in just a moment. But we're going to have a custom vase made from a shell, a custom rondelle for Bridget. And it looks like Bridget is here watching. Welcome, Bridget. Uh, some stemless wine glasses for Hillary. And then we're going to continue on with our theme of happy hour. So we'll have a scotch glass and a goblet made in three pieces and what we call a beer beer mug. And here's a display of a lot of the drinkware that we have available today. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, David. Good to have you all with us. So uh, anyway, that's our theme today is the custom pieces and drinkware for a happy hour. So, well, let's review some of what we've got here. These pieces are labeled by number. If you'd like to order one, you can either go through Facebook Messenger, get in touch with Theta right now, you can uh, tell her in the comments, but I'm sure you don't want to place your order while everybody's watching. Or you can go to our website, artifier.com. So up here in the front row, at number one, numero uno, we've got some beautiful stemless wine glasses that Foster's made. These come in a variety of colors. If you choose to order number one, these would be the colors you get. If you'd like a custom order, just let us know and we'll make them whatever your hearts desire. Number two back here, we have several mugs, different constructions. We've got uh, confetti mugs back there along the back where we have the uh, beautiful opaque color and then confetti in the bottom. We've also got some that have been crackled. You can see the surface of this clear one. I'm going to grab and hold up this one though because it's got a design in it that I'm particularly partial to. And this is kind of a honeycomb pattern, and it really, really makes a great mug. So there's our mugs, number three. We've got uh, Pilsner glasses back here. And then at number four, we've got a pair of goblets with extremely long stems. Five, we've got uh, champagnes back here. And then moving on up, we've got a more open uh, straight-sided piece that you might like. Seven is another pair of goblets back here. Uh, water or wine glasses, the tulip-shaped goblets at number eight. A lovely decanter at number nine. Going to try not to throw the pixie dust on you, but let's see if we can get a closer view of this beautiful decanter here. That's number nine. Ten are our infamous beer beer mugs. For all of those of you that would like to just simulate having beer in it when it's sitting on the shelf and then go ahead and fill it. I can guarantee you those hold a lot more than 12 ounces. Number 11, a pair of shot glasses. I'm sorry, scotch glasses here. And 12 are the shot glasses, which you'll see made later. Our price list is back up here for the shot glasses, 75 a pair. I'm, uh, Scotch glasses, 90. Pilsners are 85. And these are all sold in pairs. There's decanter, uh, stemware, the stemless wine glasses, and I'll get right over here so we can see the beer beer mug. And so before we go any further, let's go ahead and take a look at the piece we're giving away from last week, which was this beautiful blue ruffled bowl. And that goes to Suzanne von Himmelberg. And that's because she commented, her name was entered in the drawing, the random drawing we have, and this will be shipped to her. For those of you that are watching this week, it's this pair of stemless wine glasses which Foster made. So be sure to comment, let us know what's going on, tell us where you are. We can play Car 54, where are you? Let us know what part of the country you're joining us from, or the state of Maryland, Virginia, D.C., whatever and uh, we'll be glad to hear from you. So, let's see what's going on around here. We're going to start off with the custom vase, and Todd is just getting ready to go. 
Hillary's on. Todd, you want to say hi to Hillary? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to name about 50 more people. You have to remember their names in, in order. Uh-huh, right. How about telling us what's up today for this custom face, Todd? <clears throat> making a uh, cane swirl base. We we'll start with a, uh, a white background that we're going to uh, put some color on soon. We have some cane heating up in a mold. Much like this, actually this is what we pulled this morning. We got a, a transparent green and a transparent violet. This is a custom order uh, for Michelle. She came by the studio last week and described a piece similar to the one on my bar ring table, but we're going to do some different decorations to it. So, we'll spread some color out, we'll pick some cane up, we'll twist it one way, we'll twist it another. And we'll uh, see where it goes from there. All right, sounds like a winner. Take you over here. Hey, David from Forestville, cool. And I saw that I believe Bridget said she's from Leesburg today. Uh, I live in Lovettsville, so great in that part of Virginia. So here's the cane Todd was talking about preheating, and he's got them in an optic mold. And that optic mold has uh, 10 little ridges in it. He's got 10 pieces of cane in there. And what will happen in just a few moments is after he's picked up some white on his gather, he'll uh, blow it out some and then he'll get that cane picked up by plunging the glass straight down into it and blowing out against it. Todd Michelle says good morning and thank you for the vase. So there's your man right there. Okay. And let's say let's say hi to Josh. It's a special day for Josh. Why it's that? Amanda's birthday. Oh, that's special for me. Yeah, <laughs> oh it is. Very yeah, because I've got a tip for you. What's that? And yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's hear it. Hear so anyway, here we go. Todd's picked up more glass on his uh, bubble, and he's actually going to take a little bit off. He'll use his diamond shears and just peel that glass oh, off. So the viscosity <laughs> at this point is really easy to deal with. It just kind of drips off. Jennifer, 10 minutes from the studio. My goodness, you should be here. Okay, so Todd's got the glass gathered up, and in just a moment, he'll be loading it up with white glass. Got the frit over here on the marvering table. And I'd mentioned the pixie dust earlier, the picture pixelating. Well, that just depends on where we stand in the studio. So I'm trying to get over here to make sure you've got a good view of this. You'll see him roll it all through that white, and by changing the angle of the iron, he just changes what part of that gather of glass gets covered up. Laura from Annapolis, welcome aboard. Glad to see you guys. And I'm glad you're playing the game of Car 54, where are you? Because it, it helps to know. Uh, sooner or later, we ought to get a check-in from Michael Herman in the Netherlands. Amy, hello from Glen Burnie. Okay, so. Todd's reheating that glass so he can come back and pick up some more white. We've told you many times before, the glass blower has just a couple of minutes after heating the glass to get into the working part of it. Because as he's out of the glory hole, the glass loses heat, the heat dissipates. You saw him tip the end of that down in there, that's just so he could get more coverage on it. And now the rolling back and forth picks up that white. Another coat or two, Todd? Yeah, okay, he's gonna do another couple coats. We want a really nice, solid coat of white on this. If we only went through it one time, it's possible that when the piece blows out, the little pieces of white would actually separate. Even though they're very, very small, and you can see from right here on the edge of the marver, some of these look almost like grains of salt or sugar. So they're very, very easy to spread apart once they start heating up and we're blowing. So like us, share. Now I haven't seen any hearts or thumbs up yet this morning. We could use a few of those, okay? We want to feel the love. All right, and uh, be sure to comment. The comment section is where you'll get entered in our free drawing. So if you're joining us a little bit late, I'm Bruce. Todd's working on the piece right now. This is a custom order promised you that I'd mentioned uh, business about custom pieces, and I will right now. 
If you would like to see a piece made live stream, just get in touch with us during the week. You can contact us on Facebook. You can go to theartoffire.com and place an order. Or you could use the telephone and call us and place an order that way. And once we work out the details with you, we'll be glad to make a piece for you next week. Uh, so regardless of whatever our theme is for the week and what types of pieces we're making, we're always happy to throw in something custom made. Will you see me make a piece on these live shows? Unfortunately, you probably <laughs> will at some point. I'm the one that's full of hot air though, so I'm doing the talking and the, and the uh, camera work for right now. Jen Johnson says her birthday is this Saturday. Well, happy upcoming birthday. And Carrie Green, a former student from Glen Burnie, great to have you with us. Hey, there goes some hearts and some thumbs up. Even a few smiley faces, love it, love it. Okay, so Todd's getting this shaped up now. We're pretty much done with the white, Todd? Yeah, okay, very good. So Todd is going to get this shaped up and worked into the just the right shape for gathering. And it'll be what, one gathering into the cane? Alrighty, and uh, today's theme is happy hour and Todd's participating. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, op we're not gonna open the thermos. No, we're not gonna open that. So he's over there doing a quick check of the sizes. And what'll happen here is once he gets his hot glass ready to go, he'll uh, probably have Josh come over and kick the uh, torch out of the way. Joyce Ferguson, finally I can hear the fabulous narrator. Well, thank you, Joyce. <laughs> that's, that's my wife, for those of you that I haven't mentioned my last name. Welcome aboard, sweetheart. Okay, so Todd's got the glass. He's going to strip some off. You see how it just flows out. Would you do a custom vessel sink? We're really not doing sinks right now. However, let's catch this right here. As Todd drips down into the canes, he blows out against them, establishes contact. I'm going to back up, and out he comes with canes on the gather of glass. Now, we put the canes a little bit longer. Does the humidity in the air affect operations at all? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, especially the operators, Susie. And I will get back to the rest of that narration of what's going on there in a second. But I like answering the questions. So. The main thing that's affected by the excess humidity, say in the summertime, is Josh and Todd and me. Because it gets really miserable if you're wearing a cotton t-shirt and it's 125 degrees in here. So uh, Jennifer says, Bruce, you can talk and make a piece at the same time, right? Well, yeah, I, I, I really can because that's usually all I do. I'm all talk. So anyway, back to the cane piece, you'll notice that Todd had the canes extended a little bit longer than need be. And that makes sure then that there's no short spots when he goes to create the piece. And those little bits that he's hitting right now might actually fall off. But you can see that entire gather of white is fully covered by canes. So if you've got any requests, let us know. Be sure to comment. The comments are what's going to get you entered into the drawing for the free pair of stemless wine glasses. And again, you can order pieces through Facebook Messenger, our website, artoffire.com, or you can email us and you can call us up on the phone. And if you'd really like to watch your own piece being made, like I know Melissa is watching this cane get twisted, so you can see how it's on there. And Todd's using the friction between the glass and the metal tabletop to twist the canes. Charles, uh, check back. Charles says he's never seen the canes before. Check back a couple of episodes. We did a, uh, several of them in the past, and I'm sure we'll be doing more because all of us here at the studio really do enjoy working with the cane. So Todd's taking the piece now and a little more twist. 
So you'll see how he stays in one spot and he's twisting clockwise. And what that does is impart a twist to the cane running down the piece. And when he gets all this to the point he wants, he'll probably stop. No, I'm kidding, so he will. But now he's sealing the back end so it doesn't come all apart. And with a little puff of air trapped in the blowpipe with his finger, he can expand the bubble. And that's really about all the time he had to work the piece before needing a reheat. So he's, he's got this under control and he's getting it shaped up like he wants. And uh, in a few moments, Josh has already loaded up the optic mold. I'll stand here and show you, okay? So that's gonna be the second set of canes that go on to this piece in a couple minutes. Jake Weiss, I've been here, made some glass pumpkins. What an amazing place with amazing people. Well, thank you. Keith Daly is on. Hey, hey Todd says hi. Where's Josh? Josh, you got to say hi to hey, Keith. Keith. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we spent quite a bit of happy times here with Keith. Okay. So Todd's getting this twist just exactly like he wants, and then we'll continue on with the base. So this, I'm pretty sure, yes, this is from Michelle. So this is what she's ordered. Any of the rest of you that would be interested, whether you'd like a vase, a drinking glass, uh, whatever, anything that's in our catalog, really, and some things that you can make up and we're willing to try. You can message us on Facebook, on, the web, on our Facebook page. Here we go now for another cane pickup. So he's got this set of canes twisted count, uh, clockwise. They were all done by turning clockwise. He's going to drop in again. Now's the point where I have to be like a golf announcer. We're on the 18th hole. Okay, so, he's, so a couple of them didn't quite stick. Not to worry. Josh is heating up the cane a little bit. Those two are now stuck. What a recovery. We have a favorite saying around here. It's not what you can make, it's what you can fix. And that is absolutely true. Okay. So Todd's got both sets of cane on there now. And he's going to be twisting this other one once he gets it sealed. But you'll notice once again that a lot of the canes are sticking up beyond the edge of his gather. That's so he can ensure that he's got total coverage. And by taking the back of his jacks and pressing them down, they don't just flop all over the place. Christy says that the rondel you made last week, Todd, arrived yesterday, and it's gorgeous. We're really happy to have that. Really happy to hear that. We like, uh, we like it when the pieces arrive in one piece. And we like it when the customers really love them. So if you see something you'd really love, why not order one? Not only why not order one, why not watch it being made? If you place an order this week online through artoffire.com, on our Facebook page, uh, Art of Fire Contemporary Glass Blowing Studio, or call the studio. Uh, if you're going to call the studio, please don't call Foster's number. We're using his phone for the filming. Okie doke. So Todd's got the second layer of canes in there. And will these be twisted counterclockwise, Todd? Okay. So there's our design element. And you can see a lot of times that uh, the design, the decoration of a piece, actually sometimes takes much longer than the actual making. So Todd will come back and he'll begin his counterclockwise rotation again. Friction of the glass against the tabletop, that metal table we call a barber, causes those canes to twist counterclockwise. Beautiful, and you can see that crisscross design in there now. Michael Harmon he says he's sorry he's late. Oh my goodness, well, better late than never, Michael. Uh, Michael's our friend from a long time back, spent several years here. And he's in the Netherlands now. And every week, Michael seems to win the contest of who's furthest away. 
Michael, we started off with uh, car 54, where are you? Just so folks could tell us where they were watching from. But I think you win. Sad to say there's no prize for that, but you're, you're the winner. Unless somebody else calls, uh, uh, signs in. Uh, oh, it'd be cool if we got somebody from Australia. I don't know how we arrange that. My mother-in-law's from Australia. Your mother-in-law's from Australia, so if she watches from uh, Point of Rocks, today. Maryland, and tells us she's from Australia, yeah, that counts. Yeah. Amanda Reese just tuning in. Uh -oh. What is Todd making? Before wow. we cover that, we got to say happy birthday, Amanda. Happy birthday, Amanda. Uh, yeah, happy birthday. So yeah, Todd is making a vase and uh, this is a custom order from Michelle. And so she's asked for these canes and they're twisted in opposing directions. The first layer of canes was twisted clockwise. Todd now has the second layer of canes on and he twisted them counterclockwise. Now you can see he's rolling back and forth with it, and he's got a really nice crossing pattern there. There we go, beautiful. And yes, it is possible to over twist the second gather and undo the twisting you did on the first one. So yeah, we gotta pay attention, and Todd always does that. So, <laughs> Marianne, welcome from Rockville. Okay, and Keith Daly says hi to Amanda and Michael. All right, we're getting them in there now. So, Todd's making a vase form, and are there going to be any more decorative elements to this, Todd? We're actually going to drop a foot on this. Uh, originally, uh, it's just an element we're going to add to it because it's going to give stability to the piece rather than trying to blow the foot. So, we're going to drop a clear foot to this little shell. Uh, I think it'll make the piece look a little prettier. Great, great, okay. Michael Herman says happy birthday, Amanda. Okay. Yeah, everybody. yeah everybody's in on the celebration. You're modeling off of this blue piece over here on the Marver, aren't you, Todd? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna do a, this is not the same color pattern, but this is the type of shape that we're going for for Amanda. And as he said, he'll be doing a dropped foot and sometimes we call them like a cookie foot because it really is like dropping cookie dough on a baking sheet. So be sure to like and share. Let's have some more of that thumbs up and heart sacks. And this man is working really hard. Yeah, I'm talking about myself, not Todd. He's really not, he's really not straining. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so contact us. Get in, get in on the comment list because that's how you'll be entered in the drawing to win a piece. But you know what? This this design is just so cool. Let's go over here and take a really good look at this crisscross of the canes on the white background. And even though we found out how to put a gel pack on the back of Foster's camera, I'll try to stay a little bit away so we don't overheat it again. The technical issues are sometimes beyond our comprehension. So we're setting up for another gather, sir? sir? That's usually the clue as why he's just sitting there looking at the glass. But he's not just looking at it and admiring his work, he's allowing the heat to dissipate. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, once the heat's dissipated, he'll be able to gather again, and uh, if he went in too quickly and the glass was still hot on that core, then he'd have a lot of trouble because the heat of the furnace, the glass in there is 2,000 degrees, can penetrate what he's already done and actually wind up distorting it. So he's letting some of the glass drizzle back off into the furnace and now he let it drip right into the bucket. And then a quick lift to level and he actually goes up with it a little bit so it doesn't get too long. And now trimming some off the end. And there we have that beautiful cane pattern fully surrounded by a fresh coating of clear 2,000 degree glass. So, he's gonna marvel this a little bit to cool the tip 
and he's going to start working on the opening prop, blowing out process. So now we're actually into construction of the vase after all this time. Tracy Jones, go ahead and drop that major hint to your hubby. Get your anniversary gift made on live stream and it, you, you can see it made before your very eyes. Okay, so now he's going to start getting the heat driven into this so he can blow it out. Most of the time when we're making the glass pieces, we do the bottom half of a vessel or piece first and then we finish it up after transferring to a punty and work them on the top half. There's a few vessels you don't do in that order, but that's typically the case. If you'd like to order a pleat piece, use Messenger, our web page, or email. You can even call and we'll work it up for you. So regardless of what we come up with for a theme next week, you can have a piece made to your specification which is what Todd's doing here right now for Michelle. So we've got the crisscross cane pattern. He's cutting what's called a jack line or a neckline in it because we know that Michelle doesn't want a four and a half foot piece of steel attached to her base. I guess you could use it as a straw, but it wouldn't get much liquid. Okay, so now he's blowing it up and you can see the inflation is concentrated in the upper part. He's still got a nice thick bottom on it. So I'm going to step back out of the way a little bit. How can we buy the fabulous maroon t-shirts like that? Very simple. Just place an order. You can do that again through Messenger, Facebook Messenger, where Art of Fire Contemporary Glass Blowing Studio, artoffire.com on the internet, or email artifier at artifier.com or give a phone call. Doing it glass backwards, yes. Uh -huh. That's just about what we could say there, David. Okay, so now he's working on that jack line again so he'll get a good separation. Once he's got it inflated, suck, and then blows it out some more, he'll start to elongate it for the vessel. So if you're getting in the comment section, why wouldn't you want a piece of steel in the middle of your piece like that? Sounds practical to Bridget. Well, if you want to order one, Bridget, we can actually do that. We won't give you one of our blowpipes, though. A few years back, Josh and I were playing around with blowing glass on copper tubing. And so we actually left the copper tubing in the piece, and you can can make kind of a little fountain thing and run water through it. But that's for another day, because right now we've got Todd Hansen making this beautiful piece of glass for Michelle. So he's applying the heat in the glory hole. The glory hole runs at about 2300 degrees, and that gives the glass a quick zap of heat, and then that allows you to keep working on it. If you stayed out for too long, the glass gets cold and can't be manipulated. So now we're getting into that little uh, propeller spinning motion and the gravitational forces it lengthen it and now we're starting to take shape for the vase. Little equipment adjustment there. It's really important how far, how close that yoke will get to the glory hole because even there are only maybe two to three pounds of glass on the end of the pipe, you're holding it by the back end, and that end is then another three feet or so away from you. And over the course of the day, that really gets pretty difficult to keep holding and centered and balanced. So the closer we may move that fulcrum or the yoke to the glory hole, the easier it is to balance. Notice he looks completely relaxed. Okay, so now we're going to come around a few more rotations. Notice he can change the speed. He's looking up, not to see where the glass is, but what it's doing. And he can judge the length, and when it starts getting right out to where he wants, he simply stops. All right, so now it's back into the glory hole for a little more heat. And now he's going to hook up to the blow hose. Somebody on one of the previous sessions we did asked why we didn't have a bench blow. 
which is really when one glass blower just gets down to the end of the pipe and gives a little air for whoever's working at the bench. But in these days with COVID, we don't think that's a really great idea. And plus, most of us like working with a blow hose anyway, because it gives you the opportunity to control the input of air and the manipulation of the glass with your hand. So you can see that he's only partway into the glory hole. So he's heating the bottom half so that that's what will move. I got another saying, hot glass moves, cold glass don't. Anybody what? there? Uh, most of people I've taught will remember that. Probably much longer than they want to. So now he's taking the wet newspaper and that holds it in place and see how he's blowing and where he heated it, it's expanding. So this is giving him a nice elegant line down the beach whereas it was tapered inward a little bit before from the centripetal force. Okay. So he's working on this to get the length and the shape he wants and in just a couple minutes, Josh will be dropping a foot. If you can see it from here without me getting too close, you saw that he put the piece fully into the glory hole and then pulled back out about halfway. That's so he can concentrate the heat where he wants the glass to move. Putting all of it in just simply keeps that part from getting down in the thousand degree range and cracking. So he keeps an eye on it and he's watching the motion. Uh, we don't have a thermometer we can put on this and tell that the glass is like 1700 degrees or 1820 or anything like that. So by looking at the motion of the glass, the color, you can see from the orange glow where the heat is concentrated. And now he'll come back and he'll blow again and the newspaper holds it in place. And Josh's job right there is to use the paddle and press in. And I'm guessing we're not dropping the foot. Okay, so sometimes we adjust these things on the, on the fly. And that's exactly what's happened here. I mentioned we'd be dropping a cookie foot. We're not, and that's why Josh is paddling the bottom. Now probably do that again, and it'll be a great opportunity to see how he gives the elegant shape to the foot area, because it's going to expand outward a little bit. The pressure that Josh places on it with the jack, with the paddle, is going to actually give that a real nice effect. So here we have a nice straight side of body. Todd comes in, and now Josh presses, and you can see that contour just changing a little bit. See that constriction? Todd's actually pinching that glass with his thumb and index finger. Fortunately for him, there's a layer of wet newspaper in between him and that hot glass. So he looks over at the piece just to see how it's going. So the newspaper is a really great insulator. In fact, Josh is wetting it down right now, and that's so that it doesn't burn up. So we take about seven or eight sheets of paper or newsprint and fold it up into a piece that's what, oh, maybe eight by eight, and then thoroughly wet it. And it forms a perfect insulator, and it just absolutely protects your hand. You gotta make sure it's wet, and you can't have any cracks in it. So now Todd's changing the profile just a little bit, a little bit of taper right above that waist that's about two and a half inches up from the bottom. What a beautiful profile. Todd, what color are the canes again? Uh, it's a green and purple combination. Uh, just green and purple. There, green and purple. now we can see them. Green and violet. Lots of times you really can't see the color until the piece starts to cool a little bit. And because of the time that Todd was spent working on the bottom half, the top never cooled to a thousand degrees, it, so it wouldn't crack, but it did cool off just sufficiently. Right in the middle you can see some purple and green. So now they've created the foot area for this and Josh is going to make the punty. A punty is just simply a little bit of uh, glass on the end of the pipe. Serves as kind of a glue or a place to attach the piece to it. 
So now comes the magic moment where we deliberately break the glass free from the blowpipe. They've got it centered. Todd's using a special tool to blow on that joint. The glass Josh brought in was like 2,000 degrees. If we broke it right away, it looked like Josh was trying to land a 20-pound tuna. That thing would be flying all over the place. A little bit of water, and then Todd strikes it, and it's still moving, but Josh has total control. So there's the handoff, Todd takes it back. So now we have the bottom two-thirds of the piece formed, and Todd's gonna finish out the top for Michelle's custom-made face. So while he heats that up, we'll talk about this water business and things. Now this is the, probably the longest reheat he'll have to do. That glass was cold enough to fracture, which means it's gonna take a little while before he can actually get it hot enough to manipulate. So that's what he's doing right now, is making sure that the heat soaks in. So those of you that are commenting, let me show you real quick what you can get this week. This beautiful pair of stemless wine glasses can be yours, okay? So all you gotta do is comment, comment, comment. We'd like it if you like and share. Comments will really do the trick. Also, follow us on Facebook. If you follow us, you can get more notifications about what's going on. So again, this is Michelle's piece. Oh wow, we're up a few viewers, so perhaps I should uh, go ahead and reintroduce. I'm Bruce. Uh, I'm doing the narration and the filming. There's Josh over there celebrating his wife's birthday. Todd Hansen is the artist making the piece. And Foster and Theta, well, we've got them squirreled away somewhere. Actually, we'll show, show you them in just a little bit. Okay, so now Todd's heating the top to work that out. We'll come on over here so we can get a good close look. And you know, the feedback you give us is really helpful because some of you that have met us, met us through the Ren Fair had said you always saw what we were doing but it was always from a distance and you couldn't really tell what was going on so with that feedback we try to give you a little bit better view of what's going on so you can see the top of this is very very hot and Todd's just getting it centered and shaped up cooling that and now as he rolls the piece and opens the mouth with the metal blades, they're called jacks, you can see Josh is paddling it and now we have a perfectly flat lip on it. Sometimes when we do the transfer, that's what going to the putty is called, we wind up with a little shard or snag, but that's a really easy way to fix it. Julia says, thank you for letting us, giving us a sneak peek into the magic. Well, it's our pleasure. That's why we're doing it. Uh, we do it all the time. It's just that we don't always do it with an audience here. So uh, it's our pleasure to share with you, and we hope that uh, you'll share with your friends. Let people know what things you've seen made here. Let us know what you'd like to see. And if you would like to get your own custom-made piece, just as Michelle did with this face, Contact us here at the Art of Fire. I'll go through the details of how to do that again in a minute. I'm sure you're tired of hearing it. Josh, David wants to know if you're going to use the paddle in celebration today. Ah, yeah, he, well, he won't answer that. Okay. Amanda is on the line. and yeah. I gave him my best tip today, and that was keep the lady happy. Okay. And I doubt that the paddle would do that. <laughs> okay. Back to earth and glass blowing. Okay, Tracy says I need to win the lottery so I can buy everything. Well, yep, that, that would do the trick, but everything would probably be too much to put on your shelves. So check out our catalog. We'll, we'll set you up a payment plan. Yeah, check out our catalog. You can get something from there a lot of things online there if you've got something in, uh, that's just like in your imagination and you'd like to know if we can do it contact us and we'll either tell you yes or no 
So now Todd, again, has the heat concentrated in the upper reaches of the vessel. You can see that beautiful crisscross pattern is still there. He's using a pair of wooden jacks called Partofi right now to open it up. And the reason we use those is they don't scar the glass and they also got a little wider blade so it's easy to work. And here we go. Now we couldn't be doing this outdoors in Southern California, but we'd be starting a wildfire. That's a bad thing. Gee, that's tacky. But you saw the smoke and the, the residue coming off the paper. And uh, we're going to do one more little touch, Michelle, and this is going to be it. So let me know uh, that it's good. Okay. So Josh has wet the paper down again so we don't have sparks flying. Beautiful. Look at that pattern. That purple and green. All right. So the, the newspaper is really nice to use. It allows you to touch very gently. It's almost as if you were working with ceramics. So once he gets this, there we go. There's the kiss. Okay. Now Josh is going to go get a pair of insulated gloves. Because his regular ski gloves won't work or playing in the snow. Do you snowboard, Josh? No, no snowboarding for Josh. Okay, so Todd will put a little drip of water right into the punty joint and I'll find a place to show you this beautiful face. And it comes off and there it is and Josh takes it to the annealer where it will undergo the longest part of the glass blowing process. So watch Josh's glove smoke. Oh boy. <laughs> so the annealing on this, it'll sit all day at about 900 degrees. Right now when the glass goes in there, it's pretty close to 1200, 1300. So it'll come down slowly, but the box there is set at 900. So it can sit all day at that temperature and be perfectly happy. So um, what we'll do then is at the end of the day, turn it off. And after we turn it off, it will gradually come down in temperature and that will work overnight. It's a big box of bricks is really all it is. And just like your brick patio releases heat slowly overnight after being warmed up during the day, that does the same type of thing. All right, so let's make a little quick trip back up to the front here. And so we've seen the custom vase from Michelle. Next up on our list is going to be a custom rondelle for Bridget. Then we'll follow that with the stemless wines for Hillary. And then some of our happy hour pieces, scotch glass goblet of three pieces and a beer beer mug. So we have our price list up here. And in just a moment, I'll show you what we have. All right, so we got the shot glasses, scotch glasses, pilsners, decanter listed all that good stuff. So going down in that particular order, here are the shot glasses, right up here front and center. And then next to them, we have a pair of Scotch glasses. You'll see one made in just a little while. And then the next is the Pilsners, which are these tall boys back here. And they will definitely hold your pint without any problem, okay? We've got a decanter over here probably best viewed a little bit from the side you get a really good look at that wonderful for your wine to decant our stemware is back here we've got champagne flutes of straight and traditional margarita glasses we've got uh, water glasses we've got tulip goblets we've got all kinds of stemware and you can find even more in the catalog We've got a series of mugs back over here. Uh, several, the confetti mugs are on the back, so-called because of the multicolors on the bottom. We can put most any design you want into a custom-made mug. And then the uh, stemless wine glasses are right here. These are the ones we happen to have on display today. If you'd like either, any, either of these pair, just let us know and order them. If you want your own colors, that'll be fine too. And the last is the big boys, the beer beer mugs, which 
kind of look like they've got beer in them, even a dark beer. So there you have it. That's what we've got on the lineup today. Uh, we had Suzanne uh, Himmelberg, Cox Himmelberg, won our Blue Ruffle Bowl last week for having commented. And this week we're giving away this pair of stemless wine glasses. So we also want to alert you to coming up in a few weeks, the Countryside Artisans Tour, October 9th, 10th, and 11th. It'll be from 10 to 5 each day. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. You can visit the studio. There will be social distancing. We will have your safety as our utmost concern. And uh, you can check with the studio to find out if you do have any concerns. But everybody will be wearing masks. And we have plenty of uh, uh, sanitizing soap type stuff available. So we're ready to go for you. That's October 9th, 10th, and 11th from 10 to 5. Hope to see you. And check out our website because we've got some guest artists coming too. You want to tell us a little bit about the guest artist, Foster? Uh, that's Mike Coella, uh, who's a neighbor of ours out at the Maryland Renaissance Festival. Uh, Mike is a wood turner uh, as well as a photographer, but uh, the wood is his main emphasis out at the Renaissance Festival along with the magic wands that he produces. So, he'll be here uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, if the weather's nice, he'll be set up outside underneath the tent. If the weather's inclement, uh, which hopefully it will not be, he'll be set up inside. But we'll also have a, uh, a table of work outside under a, uh, under a tent, and we'll look forward to uh, having you with us. So, uh, if you've not been before, this is a great opportunity to come out to the rolling hills of northern Montgomery County and visit us in our home studio location. Cool. All right, so Todd's back here. He's gathered up some color, and he's doing the custom rondelle for a Bridget. What color have you got there, Todd? This is copper ruby. It's what's known as a striking color. It's actually when it gets really hot, it's going to almost become transparent. It'll actually have sort of a, uh, a bright gold uh, gel to it. And then the color changes temperature. As the glass changes temperature, that copper ruby will uh, blush back in. Uh, it gets its name because it is copper. That turns that clear glass, that really deep burgundy uh, red color. Gold will do the same thing. Uh, it starts it off a little bit more pink, like our cranberry glass. But you can see how dense that color is. As we heat it and shape it, it's going to change, become more and less transparent. Okay, so Todd's off for another gather. Someone asked a question a moment ago, and your name rolled off the screen about the handles. Typically, the handles are It's possible to put color handles on. Uh, witness our uh, pumpkin mugs, which have a uh, aventurine green handle. But putting color onto the handle gets a little bit more involved. It's not, uh, it's not something we normally do because it takes a lot more time. And this is a production glass studio and it's all about time when it's coming into production. In fact, a lot of the pieces we've been making for you on these demonstrations, the guys are taking a little bit longer than they normally would because it helps with the pace and then it just makes me talk more. But uh, some of these pieces they would not be knocking out in maybe a third the time because it's all about speed. But today with you it's not about speed. It's about education and enjoyment. So let us know if you're enjoying this. All right so Todd's got the copper ruby expanded and you can see that it's not clear yet, but it's a lot brighter and lighter than it was a few minutes ago. Exactly. And that's because the heat went into it and the glass crystals, the crystalline structure of the glass changes. As the temperature dissipates, it will turn darker. And that's what we call a striking color. And not because it's just beautiful, which copper ruby is. It's uh, one of my favorites. But at any rate, Todd is now letting this pool for another gather, and you can see the glass not only darkening because of the loss of heat, 
it's also going undergoing a transformation that striking effect. Party. Do the cats like to sleep on top of the annealer or is it too hot? It's way too hot. The annealer is held at 900 degrees all day long. However, the cats will sleep right there in front of the furnace and nobody's drizzled glass on them and most often they'll get out of the way when we're there but uh, they used to have a dog here and Daisy would challenge you to make her move while you gathered over top of her. Always an interesting experience. Okay, so we're back to the Marva for a little bit of shaping and that helps cool a little bit in the bottom. A little mold action. Okay, so Todd's got that uh, kind of diamond shape where it's wide and then tapers down and that's to go into the optic mold that you see over there. And by making the contour of the glass coincide with the contour of the mold, he gets it right in there and when he blows, it's not such a great distance to the ridges in the mold. Well, be sure to like us, share, comment, follow us on Facebook, find out more about what's going on here. And uh, if you've got any questions, like. Somebody just ask a question about handles. If they come in colors, by all means, ask them up. And uh, if you've got any requests, let us know how you got connected to the Art of Fire. Were you really searching for something else and you just wound up here today? Or have you met us at the Renaissance Fair? Or maybe you're Todd's next door neighbor. There he goes, blowing in the optic mold and we'll get a little view of the ridges as he comes out. There we go, beautiful. And you can also see right now, that went in so hot that that copper ruby color had changed to almost a bright yellow, okay? If you'd like to order a piece, you can use the Facebook Messenger. You can go to our webpage, artoffire.com. You can email us, artoffire at artoffire.com. You can even call. So here we go, time to separate. And I think it was Bridget that suggested earlier the vase might be cool with a four and a half foot steel piece of top. I doubt that Bridget is gonna want that steel on her rondelle. Can you weigh in on that, Bridget? Here we go with some inflation. You can see those ridges are still held. And he's gonna cut the jack line down. Once he gets this out to the diameter he wants and the shape he wants, he'll do a quick transfer over to the punty, which Josh will take care of for him again. Tracy met us at the Renfest, been hooked ever since. That's great. I got a feeling a lot of you have met us at the Ren Fair. That's probably why a lot of you have been asking over the last week for me to show my face because you've never seen me at the Ren Fair, even though I've been here 20 years. That's because I hold the place down while they're all at the Ren Fair. And I don't have to wear a leather skirt. But you could. I could, yeah. And I would look good in it. Yes, you would, sir. Now, if my wife is still there, tell me, Joyce, would I look good in a leather mini skirt? I'm going to distract Todd no matter what I do. Uh. Ah, Bridget said that if you left the blowpipe on, this would make a cool looking weapon. That's the Ren Fair spirit. That's what we know and love. Okay. Dale Kohler, so sorry I'm late. Can you do perfume bottles? Yes, we can do perfume bottles. We're not going to do one today. If you would like a perfume bottle, though, feel free to order one. And if you order one, we'll make it on the live stream. If not next week, perhaps the week after. So as I mentioned once before, Bridget has asked for a rondelle. Todd is making it for her. And if any of you would like to contact us within the next week, uh, Joyce said I look good in, any, in everything. All right. Oh, I'm not gonna tell you where the checkbook is, dear. Okay, so here comes Todd. 
getting ready to start opening up the rondelle. You'll notice that he's got the piece pulled back a little bit from the glory hole. He's just heating the end of it, so that's where the heat will be concentrated. That's what he's going to work on moving. Okay, so uh, anyway, back to somebody. <laughs> the names roll across here too fast, but that's actually pretty cool because it means you all are engaged. So if you would like a perfume bottle, whomever you were, just get in contact with us and arrange for it and we will make one on the live stream so you can see your very own piece made. And if you'd just like to see one made but you really don't have your own perfume, we might work one of those in on a future demonstration. We try to have kind of a theme each week, the types of pieces we're working on, but when we've got folks that would like something special, we really enjoy making that, letting you see it be made, and then we'll get into the rest of our program. So that's what our first two pieces were today. And they keep telling me that people come and people go on these broadcasts, so I'm supposed to reintroduce myself. I'm Bruce Ferguson. I've been working here with the Art of Fire guys for 20 years. I'm a retired air traffic controller. And we've got Todd Hansen making the piece right here, the rondelle for Bridget. Here we have the birthday boy, sort of, Josh Reese. And we'll get around to Foster and Theta here in just a minute. Isn't that typical? Save the ones that really make the place run for last. The rest of us are just out here having fun. Okay, so Todd's getting the heat in this. Is this the spin out? Can you make a flower? Yes, we can make a flower. Unless you're talking about the uh, animated character, the skunk from the Disney cartoon, in which case we can't make flower. But we will make a flower. We'll do that at some point. Okay. There he goes with the spin out. Todd had the biggest collection of Hot Wheels when he was a kid. And that's where he learned how to do this. Okay, beautiful. Let me get an edge on shot of that. Oh, what a beautiful rondelle. Okay, so that's going to go into the annealer and then we'll be on to the next part of our adventure. So, there you can see the red darkening from being cooled a little bit and it will continue to do that as it goes into the annealer. Sometimes the piece doesn't want to come right off of the punny. We just try it again. We don't wail away at it like it's whack-a-mole. We take our time, and there is a beautiful copper ruby rondelle. Okay, Bridget, there you go. So now, let's work our way back over here, talk a little bit about what we got and what's going on. And so, I'll show you this week's freebies since they're on the back portion of the display. If you comment, your name will be entered in a random drawing. You could win these two stemless wine glasses. Suzanne Cox Timbleberg won our beautiful fluted or uh, ruffled blue bowl from last week. So please be sure to comment, get your name entered. The first uh, couple of pieces you've seen have been special orders. So Michelle got a custom vase. Todd made that. You just saw him complete the rondelle for Bridget. Coming up next is going to be stemless wine glass for Hillary. And uh, I believe is Foster going to be doing that, guys? Yes, Foster's, Foster's going to be doing that. Okay. Then it'll be Scotch glass, a three-piece goblet, and a beer beer mug. A uh, quick review of the pricing, we've got our shot glasses, we've got our scotch glasses and pilsners, decanter on display, stemware just sold in pairs, stemless wines the same, mugs and the beer beer mug. And here they go. So what you're going to see next is the stemless wine glass. These items are numbered. I'm going to pan slowly through them in case you'd like to order one or two. 
Now, all of the mugs here have the number two, so if you'd like to order one of them, you could say, I would like the reddish-orange confetti mug, or the purple confetti mug, or the blue and green frit mug, which are those three along the back. Or you could say the crackled confetti mug with clear glass. And this here is one of my favorites, the honeycomb pattern in a beautiful violet, okay? So that's what we've got there. Number three are our Pilsner glasses. Four is a pair of long stem glasses. Five straight sided uh, champagnes, traditional champagnes. Margarita. And then water glasses, goblets, tulip shaped goblets there at number eight. Our decanter is number nine. Here's the beer, beer mugs, and you're gonna see one made in a little bit. The shot glasses and the scotch glasses. So that's what we've got coming up. Also coming up, remember October 9th, 10th, and 11th is gonna be the Countryside Artisans Tour. We'll be open 10 to five each day. There will be social distancing. There will be masks worn. There will be sanitizing agents available. You will be safe if you have any concerns. Call the studio and talk to us. It's going to be a big deal. So, next up, it's been a little while. Foster has been in the background for a little bit. So we'd like to say welcome back. And Foster's going to be doing the stemless wine glasses. Right. Yeah, and you know how it is. We tease him a lot because we got him on the spot. Welcome back. <laughs> So this one is for Hillary. <clears throat> this is the prototype. This is going to be a crack. It will have a crackle texture. It will have a white background with a multicolor in the bottom. And again, a crackle texture. We're actually going to uh, virtually all of the pieces that we make are made by hand. Yes, but some pieces we blow into a mold. This one is going to be blown into a mold to give it its basic shape and size. And the molds that we use are made yep, of, coming up in, this, of it, uh, in this instance of cherry wood from the Fruitwood family. The shape is turned on a lathe and then the mold is put together. It's actually a uh, a uh, two-piece mold that's then cut in half and hinged and is kept in water, a bucket of water to keep it moist. We have a little platform for me because I'm not as tall as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and get underway. So, I'm sorry. Tracy, well, everybody's saying hi and they're flying across the street. But Tracy Jones wants to know, where's the leather skirt? Oh, that, that's still in the house. That'll come out another time. Okay, That'll all right. later on. We won't disappoint you. All right. So, all right. So. so Foster told you about the type of mold it is. And lots of times there is mold-blown glass where the shape of the vessel is formed within the mold. And this, as he said, is a two-part mold. But because this is going to be a round vessel, he'll be turning the pipe the entire time that he has the glass in the mold. If this were a complex shape, like a lion's head or something like that, you'd be putting the glass into the mold, holding it in one place and blowing and then opening it up. And that typically results in a seam. Now he's going to gather white frit. This will be the background. Do we make our own molds? Uh, no, we do not. No, no. We, uh... there's, uh, there's several people that are in the glass industry, and in addition to making their own glass, some of them have branched out into the woodworking and working on making their own molds. So Foster's got the uh, layer of white in there coated, and once again, reheating.
you got a lot of fans disappoint. You have a lot of fans disappointed in no leather skirt. I I don't know about that, man. All right, I guess maybe next week I'll have to come back with my okay with my leather shorts. So here he goes with the Thanks cherry wood block. This is to shape it. He's also going to cool it a little bit. It sets the state. And then a quick blow of compressed air. He is the source of compressed air. By putting his finger over the end of the pipe, you see the air bulge out into the hot glass. Going to get his tools all set up for the next step. Which, if I've watched him do this a time or two, he's going to take a gather and pick up some frit and begin to work out the stemless wine glass for Hillary. Okay, so off he goes to the furnace. How long does a mold typically last? Uh, probably a couple of years, depending on the usage. About 250 to 300 pieces. 250 pieces, there you go. So really it depends on how many of y'all order stemless wine glasses. So if you want to make Foster get a new mold, start hitting us with orders for stemless wine glasses. This one has been used, but not up to 250 yet. The molds are made of cherry wood. Any fruit wood would work, but cherry seems to be the most abundant. The fruit woods uh, have a nice tight grain so Foster shaped it up a little bit, and now he's going to cover the end of the glass with the multicolored frit. Almost all of our wooden tools are made with cherry wood. Uh, it's very plentiful and a little easier to come by, but pear would actually work. Uh, any fruit wood that has a nice tight grain and maintains its structure. We could never do this out of pine or something like that or wood with a very wide grain. We've got blocks over here. You've seen Foster using the blocks. We've even got uh, steam cones in case we haven't mentioned them before. If he gets one out here in a little bit, we'll, we'll explain that. But his task right now is to get this shaped up to go into that wooden mold. So. The shape of this glass is going to mimic the inside of the mold. It'll be very close to it, but it'll be smaller because when he blows it out, it will expand a great deal. I'm with you, Bridget. Cherry wood's one of my favorite. I love cherry and I love walnut, but uh, walnut would not work for this and It'd be a waste not to use it on a beautiful piece of furniture anyway. So Foster's getting this nice and hot. He comes over and drops it into the mold. Noticed how the notch went right into there where he cut that neckline. You see the steam rising. He's blowing it out. It's hit the sides. And there is the basic shape of the stemless wine glass. There's this and maybe a couple of other pieces we make that we use molds like this, but for the most part, everything here is freehand blowing. We'll use optic molds. There he goes into the water for the crackling. Suzanne, we're glad we inspired you to watch more glass blowing. Okay, here he goes. He's going to set that neckline a little bit. And he's contouring the shape to give it that typical kind of wide bottom so your wine can breathe. And he flattens it now, and then he'll be ready for the transfer. Yes, Marianne, we think it's pretty cool to watch him use in the mold. Like I said, there's not, not a lot of pieces we use that for. You're going to putty yourself, Foster? So Foster's making this piece completely alone. He's going to hang the glass up there from that hook. And then he's going to go gather a little bit of glass. He'll come back and shape it. I'm going to get out of the traffic pattern here so I'm not in his way.
Now he brings the piece over, lays it on the bench, and it'll rest there, and there are nails or uh, lips at the end of the bench rail to keep it from falling on the floor. Now he's going to place the putty in the center of the bottom. Make sure that it's well attached and centered and then a little bit of water aids the break off at the top of the cap of the tweezers. And that one actually rolled off. It doesn't often happen, it just happened to be a little close to the nail. You can see the screws on the end of the bench. And these wood screws are what keeps the pipe from rolling off the end of the bench. The bench is actually inclined. It's inclined downward away from the glass blower. And it's also, you can see, tilted his is at a bit of an angle, which is rather unusual. You won't find this in most glass studios. So now Foster's got his transfer successfully completed, and now it's going to be time to open up the top of the vessel. So share what you see and like us comment. Again, the comments are what will get you in a drawing for a pair of blue stemless wine glasses. I'll take a quick look at them for you so you can see. So just getting in there on the comments might get you that pair of glasses. We're going to be doing this every week, giving something away. You'll see most of the orange glow toward the tip of the glass. That means that's where it's hot. And he's going to use his jacks to open it up some and start acquiring the shape that he wants for the stemless wine glass. And there we go. As my grandson would say, easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> this is why I'm behind the camera because I try to distract them. No, not really. We're just trying to keep a light moment or two. So now you can see Foster's checking it out with the calipers, and this is so he can make a pair that would absolutely match. And there we go with a beautiful confetti design on white. Wonderful. So let's hear it for Foster. How about some applause? Some of y'all know how to put up those hand clap emojis and stuff. Okay, so now he just simply taps it off the iron. And like all the other glass we make in here, it will be properly annealed. David Hogan telling lots of folks about this. Thank you, David. We appreciate it. This is only, what, our fifth week of doing this, I think? Five weeks in, we're getting more and more people all the time, and we're really happy. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Foster. Okay, so there was the stemless wine for Hillary. And then we'll be going to Scotch. Let me make sure he's not making a second. Is he making a second? He's not making, is he making a pair? I don't think he's making a pair. He's making a pair, okay. So, Foster, my lovely wife says good job. <laughs> and she's talking to you. <laughs> So you'll be making another, the mate? No, no. Well, make we'll that do, later. We'll do that later on. Okay. And uh, but it's now on to Todd because we're um, we don't want to hold you folks too long. We love having you with us, but we don't want to bore you to death with my repetition, uh, other than my uh, verbal repetition. Uh, Todd is now going to start uh, a Scotch glass, which is. Um, which is up next. Okay. So Todd's got a gather here and it is solid at this point. No air bubble in it yet. He's getting the shaping. We want to get things shaped up right before we introduce any air. And now the compressed air in the end of the pipe, we blow and cover the hole and then we'll see the bubble form. And there we go. See how nice and smooth that came out? They're almost like slow motion. And that's what we really want to go for. We want to get just the right temperature. Amanda has to get back to virtual teaching. We enjoyed having you with us. Okay, so by keeping control of those uh, temperatures, he's able to manipulate the glass real gently, 
keep it under control. So there's our first gather. Dale Kohler says it's never boring. He could watch all day. Thank you, Dale. We really appreciate that. So while Todd's picking up his next gather, this is not a custom piece. However, it could be yours. So all you have to do is contact Theta either on Facebook Messenger or theartoffire.com or call the studio phone number. But please not Foster's because I'm using his phone to film. Todd's got another gather of glass and he's got the cherry wood mold. See how it's flopping around? He just wants to get this completely under control. Again, he's marvering the tip and he's creating that kind of diamond shape that cooled the end of the glass. And now when he blows, the expansion is up there where the glass was never cooled. So that tip now is still shaped, giving him a great big thick reservoir of glass at the end. It's important to keep plenty of glass at the bottom of all the pieces because if it gets a little too thin, when we go to take it off of the putty at the end of the process, the bottom can actually crack if it's too thin. And in a scotch glass, typically you have even thicker glass at the bottom. So a quick dip down into the optic mold, more air, and just like with the Ronzel, he'll come out with optic ridges in it. So there's your difference between an optic mold and a blow mold, one where you're actually forming the piece in the mold. So while we're waiting, I'm not sure if we've used this tool yet, but I'll show you. This is called a steam cone. I just picked it up out of the water bucket, and it's also cherry wood, and it's formed into a cone, and it's wet. So you can imagine that if it's put into a piece of glass, it's going to form steam and make it inflate. Hence the name steam cone. We'll come down here and get a shot of Todd working and shaping his cup. Almost all the pieces we make can be started as a sphere or near sphere, squashed sphere, with a jack line in it. Can you explain why not to use for hot liquids? Absolutely. The hot liquids will cause what's called a thermal shock. If you take one of our mugs or champagne flutes or any of the vessels and you pour boiling hot water into it, the rapid change in temperature will disrupt the glass and quite likely cause it to crack. You might get away with it a time or two, but there's no guarantees. And if you've done that, uh, well, we told you not to. So we also suggest that you wash these, hand wash in warm water. You might get away with putting it in your dishwasher. Now, I put mine in the dishwasher all the time, but that's because I could come back over here and make a replacement for the ones that crack. So, you figure out. Anyway, it's a, it's a thermal shock. And it has to do also with the extreme temperature and the rapid expand, the, uh, the way that glass expands and contracts. And so ironically, you can put your beer mug in the freezer and put cold beer in it, and that does not cause a thermal shock. So we're getting a little bit of color onto the bottom here. Doing another? So Josh came over and got some glass, 
put it in this really pretty copper blue, and then they've added that to the bottom of the piece. So you can see that beautiful blue on the bottom. It looks orange, doesn't it? Well, most all the glasses, because when they heat up, will look orange or sort of orange, and that's what we're looking at there. We won't show the true color of that glass probably until it's annealed or possibly as we get really close to putting it away. So Todd's using the newspaper on the side of the cup while Foster paddles the bottom. This allows Todd to hold it in place while Foster pushes and Todd can blow at the same time if he so chooses. This is going to give him a really classic shape here. Yeah, if you're going to do it, let's go ahead. So now they're getting a the putty ready, and that's going to be for the transfer. The magic moment. Got his fingers crossed. Hold your breath with us. I, th I, th I think most of us have got past the breath holding moment until we're making a piece about, what, 18 to 20 inches long. Then, then, then we've got our full attention on it. But uh, Todd places it, and he'll get it centered up. So Foster's job there is just kind of hold on and let Todd manipulate it as he wants. Todd's going to make sure that it's cooled a little bit. Then he'll chill the neckline he created, tap it, and off it will come. And then Foster beats feet to the glory hole and away we go but we won't go through that whole episode again so now it's going to be straighten up the top and then open it up into the scotch glass so please comment I, I notice a lot of you are really checking in with us and we really appreciate that um, let us know how you got connected to the art of fire and it's been another half hour or so, and we may have some new viewers, so we'll go through the introduction business again. I'm Bruce Ferguson. I'm uh, doing the narration and the filming. We've got Todd Hansen over here making you a beautiful scotch glass. Foster's over in the background getting ready for the next one. And Josh is biding his time for the grand finale. Josh brings in the lip wrap. It gets applied, and by turning very slowly away from himself, he can drizzle that color right onto the lip of the vessel and take it off. Beautiful job. Okay, so now, was that also the copper blue? Yes. Okay, so it's got the same color, the button on the bottom and the lip wrap on the top. And it's got these beautiful ridges in it, so he's ready to go. Josh is picking up a paddle. And he's going to flatten the lip while Todd uses the jacks to open it up a little bit. You can notice that he doesn't have the piece very deep in the glory hole. He's only heating the portion of the glass that he wants to work with. So now he's back out. He's got his jacks in there. Josh goes on with the paddle, that's to keep the lip nice and flat. We open a little more and a little more. All right, looking good. Joyce Ferguson says we need some scotch glasses. I guess that means Bruce Ferguson gets some more scotch. I love it. Anyway, thank you for the comments. Jennifer saw us at Maryland Wren Fest and is about 10 minutes away from the studio. That's really great. We are very convenient. And just remember, folks, on October 9th, 10th, and 11th, we'll be participating in the Countryside Artisans Tour. And it will be, will be exercise in safety and precautions. There will be plenty of spacing. We'll be wearing masks and telling everyone else to wear a mask. We'll have sanitizing agents available. If you have any concerns about any of that, 
please call the studio and talk to one of us. But we'll be ready for you. So for three days from 10 to 5, uh, we'll be doing some demonstrating. You'll be able to come in and see some of the wonderful pieces we've made and make some purchases. There you go. And if, if you would like, you can place an order prior to the Countryside Artisans Tour and come by and pick it up that weekend. We'd love to see you. We'd love to have your order. We look forward to working with you. Thanks for being with us again today. Great. All righty. So there you have it. And not only that, if you want to have a piece custom made for you, you can place an order. And if you coordinate with us, you can get it made during our FaceTime Live. So if you'd like to see your very own piece made, as three of them have already been done today, just get in touch with us. Our website, our Facebook page, email or call, and we'll work out the arrangements so that you can have your very own piece of glass made right before your very eyes. And there we go with the beautiful glass, a little bit of water and a cap, and it comes off. Beautiful lip wrap. It'll show this really wonderful copper blue color, which is in this little bowl here after it's a meal. So let's make a trip back to the front and see what else is in store for us. So, today the theme was custom pieces and happy hour. So we've done the custom pieces. We did a custom vase for Michelle with a beautiful crisscross cane pattern, a custom rondelle for Bridget in a really wonderful uh, copper ruby color, and Foster did the stimulus wine, did one of the pair for Hillary. Rather than take up all the time with repeating, uh, he just did the one. Todd's finished the scotch glass, and next we'll be coming to a goblet in three pieces. And, uh, well, when the goblet's done, it's going to be just one piece, but uh, there'll be three parts put together. And hopefully, if you order it or take it home, you won't get it in three pieces. So anyway, that's next, followed by the beer mug, beer beer mug. And back here is a sample of a type of goblet that's made in three pieces. And here are a couple more. We'll find out from Foster exactly what he's going to make in a minute, okay? But the idea with the three pieces is that the cup or bowl is made first, then extra glass is added for a stem, and then the third piece is to add the glass for the foot. So that's basically what you're going to see. Uh, the champagnes back here, this blue pair and white pair, are really just two pieces. The stem is extruded from the body of the vessel and then a foot attached. So here's our price list of what you see on display today. I'm not going to labor through all the details, but I will scan it so you can see that these are the prices. Some of the pieces are sold in pairs only. The stemless wines and the stemware. And here we go. Foster, I was explaining that the three-piece goblet uh, basically gets made into one piece, of course. That's but correct. what are you making? Are you making a long stem, a tulip, a short stem? We're, gonna, we're going to do the uh, calf stem uh, goblet, and we will be doing a uh, color grouping of the mountain blue color, and then we'll, after the mountain blue is picked up and melted in, we will go ahead and pick up some crushed clear glass and melt that in on top of the blue. That will make for a visually mottled color in the cup before we put the second gather or wrap of clear glass over it and continue on making our goblet. Awesome. Okay. All right. First so step. it's going to be the half stem, the shorter stem, and you heard him explain how he's going to do that. Uh, be sure and comment. I'm trying to locate. Here we go. This is what you can have if you comment. We we'll use the names of folks that comment, put them into a random drawing, and you could win this beautiful pair of stemless wine glasses. Foster's coming back over, and he's going to tip that bowl up and put the blue into it. This is his mountain blue, 
which is a, a little lighter shade than the cobalt blue, which is the darkest blue that we have. So he's going to cover that all up. And over here, I'll show you a bowl that doesn't have any color in it. It's clear frit. So it's just completely clear glass. And this will cause a little bit of spacing when he gets everything blown out between the pieces of the blue. So he comes over now. He's going to coat this blue really thick on here. Tracy has goblets, champagne glasses, two vases, and eight ornaments. I think she needs a partridge in a pear tree. Okay. <laughs> that's no, I that's really going. wonderful because we're, we're really glad to know that folks are enjoying and using the glass we make. That's what it's all about. If you'd like your own piece, be sure to get in touch with us either on Facebook. Now he's going through the clear. And that's just shards of clear glass that are going to coat the outside. That's on top of the blue. So now he'll melt that all in. Anyway, to place an order, you can go on to Facebook with a, uh, the Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can go to our website, artoffire.com. You can send us an email. You can call. If you know Foster's phone number, please don't call it because we're using that for the filming. And so to get in touch with us, and we'll be glad to fulfill the orders you make. You have. Uh, also, check out on the website our complete catalog of pieces. There's much more than what you've seen us made here, and we can always take special orders for pieces that we're not making right now. So Foster is back now with the clear frit melted in. You can see that kind of mottled finish to it. And now he's going to use his cherry wood block to shape it up a little bit. It kind of puts a skin on the outside. And you can see the steam rising. That's because that cherry wood is soaked in water. And when the hot glass hits it, it makes a bed of steam. He blows real hard, covers the hole with his finger, and we'll watch this grow. That's because the air is going into it. It's not going to break through that steel pipe. It's not going to blow his bony finger off the end of the iron. It's going out into the hot glass. Now the reason to block right here is also to change the shape. You saw it was a little more bulbous when he blew. Well, he wants this shape here so it will gather up the next layer of glass just a little bit better. So, there we go with that model finish he was talking about. And he's back for more glass out of the furnace. Like us, share, tell your friends about us. We'd love to have more viewership. We want people to find out about what we're doing here. We must go into the Ren Fair as much as you do. Or if you're one of our customers that's just dropped in the studio and never been to the Ren Fair, you still haven't been able to see us or watch the glass blowing. So we're glad to bring this experience to you. Hope that you learn a little bit about it, get entertained in the process, and see some beautiful glass being made. And of course, we always hope that you'd purchase a piece or two, but we'd be doing this anyway. So Foster's got another gather of glass here. This is not going to be a huge gather because this is going to be the cup of a goblet. So he'll again shape it with the cherry wood block, get it formed up, and you can kind of see a shadow or a ridge of clear glass extending beyond the color. And that's so that he keeps a nice thick bottom on there. Jacks to separate it. In spite of Bridget's suggestions about either weaponizing her rondelle or leaving the blowpipe on the vase to drink from it, we will be removing this piece from the blowpipe. So, you can see the expansion taking place. You can even see that mottled surface starting to show through. Foster's going to heat it up a little bit more so he can keep working. Sharon says she's so glad we decided to do this. Well, we are too, Sharon. It's really enjoyable. We're all having a good time with it. And plus, we're reaching out to people. So why don't you reach out to us? Share, like, comment, follow. Do something with this gadgetry. And let us know what you'd like to see. Better yet, tell us what you'd like to own. So place an order. And if you like, we'll arrange to do it on one of our live stream demonstrations. We had three of them today, even though our theme today was 
happy hour and drinkware. Foster's using the newspaper to cool the bottom. He's going to blow it out a little bit. You can see it growing. And then he's going to shape this into the final shape of the cup. He uses a pair of calipers because he typically So he's got the measurements of the diameter and the height of it. Now that's an interesting tool he's got right there. This is uh, a pair of what he calls paper pegs. There's not many glass blowers that use them. We know that he uses them and uh, David McDermott up in Massachusetts has used them. Look at the model surface on this blue right now. That's absolutely gorgeous. And that's from putting the color on it. So this particular tool, I'll get a close up while he's away, those are two paper tubes that are screwed onto the end of the jack handle. And he uses those for cooling and shaping and not scarring the piece because it's not metal. What made you decide to use a mold for the stemless wine glasses? Well, I'm going to guess that it's probably due to uh, speed and consistency. Foster's cutting just a little bit of glass on the end of the blowpipe. He's gonna raise it up here in just a moment and drop it on while Josh holds the iron. He's gonna cut it free. Josh will present it to him and he'll begin forming the stem. He inclines his jacks a little bit and he's got kind of a donut shape on there. And now he'll begin to separate it a little bit from the piece. This is how he separates the glass and makes the stem. We'll give you a quick close-up shot, but I don't want to get too close for too long. Some of you may remember a couple weeks ago we overheated the phone. But we did find a little gel pad that can go on the back and protect it from heat a little bit. Right now what he's doing is cutting one more line and pressing toward the piece. And that's creating that little disc that you see at the top. Sharon says that in addition to too many pieces, or to the many pieces, she's now the owner of the Fiesta Bowl from the last show. And she absolutely loves it. So there you go, Todd. Todd made the beautiful Fiesta Bowl last week. All right, so Foster's taking another heat, and he's going to shape up this stem to its final dimensions and shape, and then we'll get a foot on it. So now you've seen two of the three pieces of a three-piece goblet. And our sincere hope is that should you purchase this or any other of our goblets, you never see them in three pieces again. <laughs> okay, so he's got that kind of chicken leg or dog bone shape going there. He's checking the calipers for the length. I'm going to stand back out of the way. Josh will be flashing the piece. There he goes with the paper pegs again. And that actually avoids cooling, or uh, stealing heat from the glass too much, and it doesn't scar the glass. A quick handoff to Josh, who will now reheat the piece in the glory hole very briefly. That's what a, a flash heat is. You're just a quick flash in there just to keep it at the right temperature. And the right temperature would be at least over a thousand degrees so that it doesn't crack. But if he should get it too hot, it would actually deform and start curling away. So he wants to see that stem nice and straight when the foot gets applied. Here comes Foster with the glass as he goes by. Josh walks into place. Josh turns the piece upright and Foster He's cutting a jack line to aid in getting the glass to flow off the pipe. If he didn't do that, it would be a slow flow. Here he goes, flips it off, and Josh presents it, and now he grabs what we call the footboards, cherry wood again. They're not gonna smoke too much. They're also wet though, and by squeezing, watch the diameter change. Watch it get larger. And it is smoking a good bit. And that's how he gets that foot thinned out really well. 
and then he'll take another heat and come back and shape it, make sure that it's completely flat. Sally Fox Tennant says this is hypnotic to watch. I'm guessing it's the activity and not my voice. Anyway, Discoveries of Ellicott City is proud to sell this fantastic glass. Their customers love it. Well, we love you for that, Sally Fox Tennant. All right, Foster's got another tool now. It's actually made of uh, carbon. And there he goes, giving it that nice tapered profile of the foot. You can see the symmetries right there. And a handoff now. We have all three pieces together. We're going to keep our fingers crossed that they never come apart. Okay, so next is the transfer. We'll come back over here so we can see the process. Although you've seen it enough times and heard the, demonstra uh, the narration, you could probably fill this in yourself. But I'm not about to go silent, so we'll talk about it anyway. Notice that Josh is keeping the pipe turning. That actually helps Foster find the center point. As it's turning, the actual center of the piece appears to stand still. And that's how you can tell it. Now, I was always a lousy outfielder. But I learned after a while that an outfielder can judge how far the ball's being hit and whether it should move in or out by judging its relative speed. If the ball is moving too fast after it leaves the batter's bat, it's gonna go over your head and you're gonna be chasing it to the wall. If the ball slows down as it goes up, it's gonna drop in front of you. But if you could get it to maintain a constant speed and not seem to move or increase or decrease speed, you're in just the right spot to get it. And the same thing kind of happens with centering the piece when you put the putty on. As you turn the iron, the outer circumference of your target is continually moving. Might even make you dizzy if you just keep watching it. But if you look carefully, the center stays still. That was one heck of a digression, huh, Foster? <laughs> so in the meantime, he's heated the lip of the vessel. You can see it glowing orange, bright hot. And what he's going to do now is open it up a little bit. And grab a pair of shears and cut it. Yep, we can cut glass. As long as the temperature is right, it's not that much different than cutting through Oh, say cardboard. I'm not going to try to tell you it's like paper, but it'll cut very easily. It's going to get it rounded again. And then he'll start working. Aha, uh -huh, we're going to get to see the ubiquitous steam cone in use. All righty. So glad I showed you that a little while ago. And since another 20 or 30 minutes have passed, and I'm told to reintroduce people, you're watching Foster Holcomb. The Art of Fire, he's making a uh, three-part goblet over here, trying to hide in the back is Josh Reese. And there's Theta with Harry. Hello, Theta. All right, and I'm Bruce, I've got the camera, so I'm not gonna turn it around. So what Foster's doing right now, chilling the lip of this, and here goes that cone thing I showed you a minute ago. He puts that in there. Now watch the top of the piece. See it swelling? That's because the steam is pushing the glass outward. And that's why we call it a steam cone. So Carol Ann says, something I never knew. I wondered how they centered it. Well, part of it is looking for the part that's not moving. Sometimes it's just dumb luck. No, it's never dumb luck. <laughs> We get, it. we get it intentionally. But we can actually see a little bit of the evidence here in just a moment by watching the glass as it turns. So Foster's heating the bowl of the cup now primarily. He will flash heat the foot every once in a while by putting the whole thing into the glory hole. And now it's back to the bench to open. 
the way you can tell his stem is centered, look at his stem, don't look at the cup, don't watch his magic hands. If that stem wasn't centered, it'd be bobbing up and down like it was on a camshaft, but it's not. It's basically sitting perfectly still as it rolls. So it would bob up and down like this if it wasn't centered. And that's one of the things that glass blowers have to look at. It's keeping the glass centered and proportional. A final check of the uh, diameters and his height of the vessel. And then he shakes his head, yes, okay, it's a go. And you can see that beautiful model finish from the blue with the white over it. It'll be a quick flash, drop it off, and then into the annealer. So again, we don't want that four and a half foot piece of steel on our drinking glass. Sounds like a soap opera as the glass turns. I like that. Okay, I'm just gonna give that a tap. It breaks free, and now another one in the box. And there is the three-part goblet made into one part. Don't ever let it come apart. Okay, so let's see here. We're pretty well through things down to the last. Of course, we saved the best for last. Not because of the piece. I'm kidding. Now, this is a fun piece, and a lot of people enjoy it. So we did a custom vase for Michelle, a custom rondelle for Bridget, stemless wine for Hillary. We did a scotch glass. We saw the goblet, which combines three pieces into one. And now we're going to do what we call the beer beer mug. If we just said beer mug, it might be clear glass. But since we want it to look like it has beer in it, we add a gold color to it and even put some white in it to look like foam. So a quick review of the price list right here of what we have on display. You can use the numbers that are on the display table for reference to PETA, or if you contact us later, just tell us what it is you want. So there's a quick scan, and there's the price on the beer beer mug, and we'll focus in on them right away. I can guarantee you that will hold more than a pint, and we can make them in different colors too. So let's go ahead and get down to Josh right now. We'll come back to that table before we do anything else. All right, before we leave you. Okay, so Josh has a piece of gold brown in the annealer. There it is on the end of the blowpipe, and he's going to melt that in. So this is the first step. Now this is one piece that we don't actually make the bottom half first. We're going to be making the top first, but interestingly enough, we're going to turn it around before we finish it. So it's a, it's a really neat construction process. Are the drink, dish, drink, uh, drinkware pieces dishwasher safe? No, hand wash only, please. Um, you might get away with it, but we wouldn't want you to take a chance. And I said earlier in the broadcast, I sometimes put mine in the dishwasher, but that's because I can come back and make the next one when it breaks. So you don't want to take that chance. So Josh has got the gold brown on there. This will be the body of the vessel. This will be the portion that looks like the beer in the glass. So once he gets this all blown out and it begins to get thinned, it won't be so dark. It'll be a nice golden color. So right now he's melting that color in. A little bit of pressurized air and we'll see just a little bit of inflation. He doesn't do a whole lot at this stage because he doesn't want to thin it out too much. Think about it, that air going inside is pushing the glass outward and the more air you put in it, the thinner the walls would be. So this is a case where we wanna keep the walls kinda thick. So right now he's got his gather on there. He's gonna bring it back and shape it. And then we're going to show you how we make this the middle and the bottom already here on the top of the blowpipe, which I know makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> that's right. But that's going to be the bottom of the piece. And that's just backwards from what we normally do. That's because we're going to change it over to another blowpipe in a little bit. This is going to be a lot. Oh, OK. I see. Theta answered that question. This will be a light beer. 
So Josh is forming this into a tube, and it's got an air bubble in the middle, which he's going to expand some, and we'll get in here and we can see it. And now he's going to pinch it and pull it out some. And in just a few moments, he's going to cut the end of it off. He's elongating it so he can find where the bubble is, and he's just gently surrounding it with those shears. So he just put an indentation in it. He didn't actually squeeze it, or that would have closed it. Now, when he gets that wet and smacks it, it's going to come off the end of the blowpipe, and there'll be a hole in the end of it. So remember, this is the bottom of the piece, and it's in the wrong place for construction. And sometimes you got to hit it a couple times and get a little more water on it. Come on. And I, I'm going to stand back just in case, and just just in case a chip flies off. But if you let us see the hole, John, there we go. Okay. So now it's open to there. So that's that's the bottom of the piece. But it's in the place that the top normally is when we make a piece. So this just gets a little bit better. So now Josh is going to round that out and flatten the edge. And in the meantime, Todd has gathered up some glass and he brought the clear glass over and he rolled it in this white frit here. And this is going to be the foam on the beer. And being an experienced beer drinker, Josh and Todd don't want too much of a head on it. So we'll only have a minor amount of white on it. But you can see the end of this tube is where that's going to go. Josh lets this cool off a little bit. Todd will bring it over and present it, and then Josh will grab the pipe with his shears and let it flatten on the marble. Then they'll lift it up and place it over the hole. Josh is going to draw it out, and now he's going to roll it on the marble to seal it, and then he's going to blow really quickly, and that's going to extend this bubble out into the white. He'll take a reheat just as soon as I get out of his way, and he'll pull the white out a little bit and cut that to what will eventually be just the right uh, size for the foam. So here he goes, he pulls it out, and then he's going to cut a jack line pretty close to the dark glass. Did you ever work as a bartender? I mean, um, this guy this guy really knows how to do a pour. Right. A wow, I'm impressed. Just lots of practice. Okay, lots of practice, okay. All right, so now he's gonna knock this piece of white off. Ah, and there's a hole in the end again. And just like you don't want your glass to overflow, we're gonna put a little clear on top of that, okay? So. So Amy bought the goblet that I made. Oh, okay. And she's buying the uh, beer beer glass. Okay, well, it's thank you very made. much, Amy. Uh, Foster just informed us that you've purchased the goblet he made, and you're going to take this beer beer glass. Oh, very cool. Any of you, those of you that missed out and would like one, you can't have this one, but we'll be glad to make another. So here we go again with the same drill. Todd's bringing back clear glass this time and this is going to get capped right up on top of the foam. It flattens the edge of it so it doesn't sink down into the white, snips it off. Now the roll on the marver keeps it from falling down inside the open vessel. A quick blast of air, and you can see that bubble expand, and now he'll work. Now this tube is going to be a little longer than the white because now comes the really cool part of this piece, or in just a moment. He's going to open that up and keep it long enough that we can stick another blowpipe in it. Because where Josh is working with his clear glass right now is going to be the top of the vessel. And the top of the vessel is normally at the blowpipe. Here we've got it just bass backwards. So he's going to do this. And then as soon as he knocks that off, he's going to open that up. Todd's going to bring him a separate blowpipe 
they're going to put it into the opening and then we'll transfer it to the other pipe. So that's how we wind up. This is getting as bawdy as the Rinfest. I'm <laughs> that, that was Theta's comment. Oh, is that right? I'll, put, I'll put a lid on it. Okay. So, uh, anyway, we're going to come up next to transferring the piece to a separate blowpipe. And it's something that we do occasionally, but most pieces aren't made this way. All right, so now Josh is going to open this. And he's going to flare it just a little bit so he can guide the blowpipe in there. Takes it from Todd, pushes it in, and now he just starts to seal it against the new blowpipe. Now it's going to look like everything's right with the world because the top is close to the blowpipe and the bottom is further away. So now that all that decoration and color selection and everything's done, we can go about making a piece of glass. There's still a hole on the end of it where Josh broke it off the blowpipe. The uh, gold brown has a hole in it. What, you don't want a hole in your beer? You don't want a hole in the beer glass? Oh. <laughs> we could sell more. Yeah, that's Not true. more glasses, but more beer for sure. Okay, so anyway. Uh, he's going to... Can we see the hole? Yeah. Let's take a look. There it is. There's the hole on the end of the blowpipe. So that's going to be the bottom of the beer glass. So we got to close that sucker up. He's also marvering it there to make sure that he's got a good tight seal between the other two layers that he put on. Can artisans create patents for their techniques? For example, since it is so creative, and other artisans may want to copy. Uh, that's really kind of a gray area. It's kind of debatable because a lot of the stuff everybody does is just a variation on something that's been done for centuries. So um, there really, it really is hard to get a patent or copyright on glass blowing techniques. Usually what will happen is uh, the glass blowing community is not very big. There's not a lot of professional glass blowers. So people recognize each other's work. And if you try to rip somebody else off, you're going to hear about it. Okay, so now he's closing that off with the shears. And now he has an enclosed tube and we can go about making a standard vessel. That's right, as one of Foster's instructors used to say, it's all been done before. So that marvering action right there is going to seal it and also thicken the bottom of that nice gold brown. So now you can kind of see the colors taking shape in the order they'll be on the, on the mug. So we've got the gold brown, which will thin out even more and become a nice uh, light beer, not quite a pilsner, maybe a lager, and then the foam or the head, and then the clear will actually be up at the top of the glass. So he's letting this cool a little bit so he can take another gather. Viscosity of the glass is such that it'll just run off like that and then by turning the pipe to level it just burns off and what actually happened is the, the glass burns itself apart. He's got more than he needed so he just cuts some off. Glass is kind of a subtractive art. You can always take material and get rid of what you don't need but if you need to put a whole bunch more then you're probably out of luck. Ted asked if this has a te uh, technique has a name. Well, actually it's kind of an encalmo. It's what we call a poor man's encalmo. Um, and we will get into encalmo probably in another session, but it's basically joining two colors together. He had some gold brown, then he added some white to it, then he opened that up and added some clear. Now we're going into optic mold to put nice ridges into this beer beer mug.
We've got the deep ridges in there. Now you can see that the gold brown is actually a little bit narrower down just because it needs to be blown out. You can also see the color lightening up as it gets thin. Again, you've heard it from us before, cool the tip so it doesn't blow out too much. So now, we'll get our line of separation established. And there you have the basics of probably 80% of what we make. A sphere with a jack line in it. And now it's just a matter of gravity and centripetal force to make it into a beer mug. So I'll pull over here to see if we can tell. He's not heating real deep. You can kind of see that that neckline is pulled back some. Not only is it narrow, it's very hot, okay? And we don't want it, it twisting all over the place while he swings this out. But now it's time for a little elongation. See how he's swinging gently at first and then spinning it around. When he first comes out, it's very, very hot. So while it's that hot, he doesn't want to apply excessive force to it. Otherwise, it might elongate to what, about two or three feet? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be kind of cool looking, but totally useless. So, he's checking the diameter and the length, okay? If he makes it too long, it gets too thin. It's that old Goldilocks thing. Not too thin, not too fat, just right. So he's getting to the point of just right. And he's going to bring it over. He's going to stabilize the sides with the jacks, change the angle a little bit. Todd's going to press the bottom flat. We'll get up here where you can see. And now you can readily see the beer in the bottom of the glass, the foam toward the top, and the rest of the clear glass at the top. Time for a transfer. It could almost be a beer-filled pumpkin. Well, it should look like that if we'd have just stopped at the sphere. We have some people in the audience with active imagination. I'm glad to hear it that I'm not the only one. Okay. All right, so here we go with the transfer coming. Todd is making the punty. A little bit of water on the neck and a tap of the pipe and it breaks free and then it'll be time to open it up, put a handle on it. Someone earlier today asked us uh, if the handles are always clear. Most always they are, and uh, most of our mugs it's just, it's easier, it's quicker that way. Putting color into the mix changes the heat, it takes more time, and uh, so we don't usually do that. Uh, there have been some special requests when we actually have. Well, our pumpkin, our pumpkin mugs. Yeah, yeah, I'd mentioned that. We use a, uh, what's called a venturine or sparkly green for the handles on those, the same color that we use on the stem. And that, I can tell you, is a little bit trickier than putting on a clear handle because by the time that you uh, get all that color picked up and everything, you start losing heat. You put it in an optic mold for ridges. It's, uh, it gets a little complex, but we can do it. Right now he's heating the lip of the vessel. He's gonna bring it back, start to open, and Todd will paddle the lip flat. jacks to completely straighten the side while he's on the outside of the vessel. If he puts them on the inside, he can ensure it's roundness. He's going to take a quick reheat and touch that up again, and then they'll put a handle on it. The 
roll on the Marva right now ensures that it's a straight-sided vessel. By having a really light touch, he's able to control that. Goes back in with the jacks for the end of the touch-up, and then he'll hand it off to Todd. We agree with you, Sarah. These guys are really supremely talented. Check in with us. Let us know what's going on. Uh, be sure to comment. That's how you get into in the running for the free piece. We'll go back down to the table and show you that in a minute. Josh right now has a good size gather of that gooey glass and he's gonna keep it kind of fluid. He doesn't want it to set up too much. As he brings it over, notice he's still turning it. Then he'll place the handle on the bottom of the vessel, draw it up gently, and when he snips it off, Todd flips it so the handle is pointing downward. Josh brings it up, makes his contact point, and then uses a carbon bar. It's a piece of carbon on the end of the uh, wooden stick there. And then Todd will throw open a door for him so he can put it all the way in there with a handle. He spins it around and that extra force extends the handle without thinning it out. And there you go. So a couple of heats to reshape it and then we'll be putting it away. Yes, Carol Ann, this is a dream job for some. There you go. A beautifully curved handle, nice taper to it. Perfectly formed once again, Mr. Reese. Thank you. Okay. So now a little drip of water right onto that punting joint. Todd catches it. And away we go into the annealer. All right, guys, way to go. Let's, yeah, let's show some hearts and some thumbs up for Josh and Todd. Clap, yeah, all that good stuff. So we give you a quick review down here of uh, what's going on today and what uh, we can look forward to in the future. So our theme today was making custom vessels or custom orders and also happy hour. So I hope we were happy enough for you today. So we made a custom vase for Michelle a custom rondelle for Bridget, stemless wine glass for Hillary and Foster will be making the mate to that later, a scotch glass, a three-piece goblet, and a beer beer mug. So here we have the prices on the vessels and pieces that we have on display here. I'll run through those real quickly. Shot glasses at 75 a pair, scotch glasses 90 a pair, pilsners 85 a pair, decanters uh, 110 stemware, 147 a pair, stemless wine, 65 a pair, mugs, 45, and a beer, beer, 85. And a quick review of what they are. We got to put a name with a face, right? All right. So here are stemless wine glasses. If you want either of those pair, just let Theta or Foster know that you want one of the items that are labeled number one. Number two are our mugs. Now, they are all different mugs, so if you want to specify one, we have a clear one with the confetti. Behind it, we have a red one with confetti, a purple one with confetti. Then we have a blue and green frit mix, and then my favorite, the one that has the honeycomb pattern in it. Also, we have the Pilsner glasses here. That's number three. Four is a pair of tall stem uh, goblets. Five. Nice blue, beautiful copper blue uh, fluted piece. Champagnes here also. So those are both labeled as five. Six, the martini. Beautiful cherry red color. Seven is a three piece goblet, but this one with the short or half stem. And then, of course, eight, the tulip goblet. Nine, we have the uh, decanter. Ten is the beer beer mug, which you've just seen. 11 is the scotch glass, and 12 the shot glass. And if you've commented, you will be entered in a drawing for next week to be awarded a pair of beautiful blue stemless wine glasses. So next week our theme is going to be pumpkins and witch hats, and who else knows, oh my. So if you have anything that you would like to order, please be sure and get in touch with us. 
and we'll be glad to make it as you watch it. Additionally, a couple weeks from now, October 9th, 10th, and 11th, we'll be do participating in the Countryside Artisans Tour. Uh, it runs here in Northern Montgomery County. We will have a safe environment. You can check with the website and see exactly what's up, but we'll be maintaining spacing, wearing masks, and providing sanitizers. So if you've got any other concerns, please let us know. So that's it for today, and we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.